What's up guys, I'm Irishelle and this is Too Deep. According to scientists, all of the Earth used to be one supercontinent called Pangea. If you've watched a few of our videos, you know that I take what science tells me with a grain of salt. I don't base my beliefs on what man says the truth is, regardless of how many degrees they have. I take my one and only truth from the word of God. So with that said, let's investigate the claim of Pangea. If we search the entire Bible, we'll never find the word Pangea. Now that's not a condemning detail because if you search the entire Bible, you'll never find the words rapture or trinity. But as we know, the evidence for those things are in the Bible. These are just the words that we have given to them. And if you want to dive into either of those topics, you can check out our videos, The Rapture, which is under our End Times category, and our Trinity series, which is under our Nuggets of Truth category. But for right now, back to our topic. Now, if we go to the book of Genesis, we get the creation story. And within the creation story, there doesn't seem to be any evidence for Pangea. There's never like a real hint to Pangea. But if we keep going in the book of Genesis, we get to Genesis chapter 10, which is the descendants of Noah. And there's a specific descendant that has a very interesting name. So let's read that real quick. Genesis chapter 10 verses 25. It says, to Eber were born two sons. The name of one was Peleg, for in his days the earth was divided, and his brother's name was Joktan. Eber's son, Peleg, was named Peleg because the earth was divided when he was born. That's a very interesting statement. Now, just reading this, it could really just mean anything, just off the top of our heads. So let's get a better context of what's happening at this time period. If we go to the very next chapter, we get the story of the Tower of Babel. So this is where God came down and he confused all of mankind's language and dispersed them all over the face of the earth. But let's take a closer look. The Tower of Babel was built in the time of Nimrod. Nimrod, according to Genesis chapter 10, verse 8, was the son of Cush. And according to Genesis chapter 10, verse 10, the beginning of his kingdom was Babel. That means that the first thing Nimrod built was Babel. Now let's take a look at when Peleg was born. Genesis chapter 11 verses 10 through 17. These are the generations of Shem. When Shem was a hundred years old, he fathered Arpashad. Two years after the flood, and Shem lived after he fathered Arpashad 500 years and had other sons and daughters. When Arpashad had lived 35 years, he fathered Sheila. And Arpashad lived after he fathered Sheila 403 years. And he had other sons and daughters. When Sheila had lived 30 years, he fathered Eber. And Sheila lived after he fathered Eber 403 years and had other sons and daughters. When Eber had lived 34 years, he fathered Peleg. And Eber lived after he fathered Peleg 430 years and had other sons and daughters. Now I want you to keep in mind that Shem, Ham, and Japheth are the three sons of Noah. Peleg is the great, great grandson of Shem. Nimrod is the grandson of Ham, according to Genesis chapter 10, verses 6 through 8. The sons of Ham, Cush, Egypt, Put, and Canaan. The sons of Cush, Seba, Havilah, Septa, Rama, and Septeca. The sons of Rama, Sheba, and Dedan. Cush fathered Nimrod. He was the first on the earth to be a mighty man. Nimrod and Peleg are two generations apart. And, you know, some people are like, okay, why is this important? What's the purpose of this? Well, it's because the beginning of Nimrod's kingdom was Babel. In fact, Genesis chapter 11 verse 8 says that they left off building the city, so the city itself was unfinished. Then they were dispersed all over the face of the earth, according to Genesis 11 verse 9. If Nimrod built many cities and Babel was just the beginning of his kingdom, and Peleg is two generations after Nimrod, I think it's pretty safe to say that it's not the dispersing of all of mankind over all the face of the earth that Peleg was named for. So then what was Peleg named for? Well, let's dissect our original verse. Genesis chapter 10, verse 25, it says, To Eber were born two sons. The name of 
the one was Peleg, for in his days the earth was divided, and his brother's name was Joktan. If we go to the original Hebrew of the word divided, we get the word that I'm not going to try to pronounce, which means to split and make a furrow. This doesn't sound like it's talking about the people being dispersed. If we search for this word in the Bible, we get four results. Genesis chapter 10 verse 25 that we just read, 1 Chronicles 1 verse 19 which repeats Genesis 10 25, Job 38 25, and Psalms 55 verse 9. So let's read these last two verses to get more context. This is a part of God's answer to Job, his response. Job chapter 38 verse 25 through 27. Who has cleft a channel for the torrents of rain and a way for the thunderbolt to bring rain on a land where no man is, on the desert in which there is no man, to satisfy the waste and desolate land and to make the ground sprout with grass? The word translated here as cleft is the same word translated in our other two verses, Genesis chapter 10 verse 25 and 1 Chronicles 1 19 as the word divided. This is clearly not talking about the dispersing of people, but instead it's talking about a physical division in the physical earth that made a channel for the rain. Now let's read Psalms 55 verse 9. Destroy, O Lord, divide their tongues, for I see violence and strife in the city. David was praying that the Lord divide the tongues of his enemies. So some will say that this pretty much proves that the word means dividing the tongues of people. So Peleg's name was about mankind being divided and no longer being one people with one language anymore. Okay, that sounds good. That really doesn't change the meaning of the word, nor does it change the way that the Lord uses it in Job chapter 38 verse 25 that we you know just read a few minutes ago either way i think we need more evidence before we can come to a conclusion so let's look at what the name peleg means so the name peleg is the literal hebrew word peleg which means channel root stream of water relatively small amount of liquid flowing in it this is interesting. In fact, it gets more interesting because if you search for the term Peleg, you get 10 results. Seven out of the 10 results is the word translated as streams. And it's used in verses such as Job 29 verse 6, Psalms 1 3, Psalms 46 4, Psalms 119 verse 136, Proverbs 5 16, Proverbs 21 1, and Isaiah 32 verse 2. It's translated twice as river or rivers in Psalm 65 verse 9 and Lamentations 3 verse 48. And it's translated once a brook in Isaiah chapter 30 verse 25. Matter of fact, if we keep digging into the word Peleg, we find that it also means the word artificial water channel. In other words, a water channel that wasn't there originally, but was created after the fact. So after creation. This doesn't seem to be talking about people being divided on the earth. Instead, it seems to be talking about the earth itself being divided. The physical earth, the land, was divided in the days of Peleg. So then does that mean that this would be describing Pangaea? Okay, well, let's look at the very first command that God gave to Adam and Eve. Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. And God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it, and the dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Notice the first thing God tells Adam and Eve to do. Be fruitful. Next thing, multiply. Next thing, fill the earth. We were never intended to stay in one spot on the earth. Instead, we were meant to fill the earth so that we might subdue it, which is the fourth thing God tells them to do. So if God intended mankind to fill the whole earth, why would he create us in one part of the earth, put us in Eden, but have the whole earth on separate continents and countries that you can only get to by boat or plane? That just doesn't really seem to make any sense. While you ponder that thought, Let's sum everything up for you guys. Peleg was named Peleg because in his days the literal physical earth itself was divided by artificial channels or streams or rivers 
of water that the Lord had created once the people spread out over the face of the earth after being dispersed from the Tower of Babel. This means that before Peleg, during the time of Babel, the whole earth was one supercontinent that scientists have named Pangaea. I hope this answered a few questions that you may have had about the earth being divided in the days of Peleg. And I hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel. And until next time, God bless.